Today, we're going to show you how you can help prevent mold and mildew in your bathroom in this episode of Things You Could, No Should, be doing with Habitat Elevation. We've all got exhaust fans in our bathrooms. The problem is, if you have kids, they never remember to turn it on when they take a shower. And if you're married to me, your husband forgets half the time too. Now over time, this can cause some serious moisture issues. But with Habitat Elevation, you can bypass their forgetful lizard brains and automate your fan to turn on when the shower starts and turn off once the moisture is cleared. Now you don't need to replace your fan. You just need a compatible smart switch and one or two moisture sensors. Now these are multi-sensors that detect motion and temperature, so they're great for a variety of automations you might want to have in your bathroom. To automate our fan, we'll start by getting our devices in place. First, we're going to replace our regular fan switch with a new smart switch. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's installation instructions very carefully if you do this yourself, or call an electrician if you need some help. Next, install a moisture sensor on or near the ceiling in the shower. For more precise relative humidity automations, you'll want to install a second humidity sensor in another room to give you a base humidity reading. With your devices installed, the next step is to add them to your Habitat Elevation system. If you've never added a device, you can find a link in our Adding Devices tutorial in the description below. Once the new devices are added to the hub, we're all set to make the magic happen. So let's go to our hub and show you how to automate your fan. Like most things in life, there is an easy way and a better way to do this. Let's look at the easy way first. Now this only requires one humidity sensor and you can set it up in basic rules. All right, so we're gonna go into our apps here. We're gonna do a basic rule, create a new basic rule. So we're gonna say when a humidity sensor, we'll select senses that humidity has risen above. We're gonna choose our kids bathroom humidity sensor. And we're gonna say when it gets above 75% humidity, we're gonna have it turn on the kids bathroom fan. So that'll turn our fan on. Now we're gonna add a wait until, so we're gonna wait until the humidity sensor since that humidity has fallen below, we'll select that same humidity sensor. And we'll say when it falls below 65, we're gonna have it add another action here. We're gonna have it turn off the kids bathroom fan. So that's really all we wanna do. We wanna turn on 675, we'll have it turn off when it drops down below 75, there's no restrictions on that. We can change the rule, we're not gonna do that, so we're gonna hit done. So that's a pretty easy way to get a basic humidity rule in there. The problem with that is that most people live in climates where the humidity varies quite a bit, so it can be hard to find a level that accurately turns on the fan on and off. You may need to adjust the humidity level based on what season you're in in order for that this rule to work the way you want it to work. So let's look at a better way to do this. Now a better way to automate your fan is to set it to turn on when humidity in the bathroom is high relative to the humidity in the rest of your house. So that's why we installed that second humidity sensor in our hallway. This is going to require us to use rule machinery. Here we go. Okay, so we're gonna go into our apps here. And then we're going to go to rule machine. We're gonna build a new rule. This is gonna be our kids bathroom humidity rule. I can type. So we've got our new rule here, and now we're gonna select our trigger event. This is what's gonna uh, kick this rule off. So we're, again, looking at humidity sensors. So we're gonna say whenever the kid's bathroom humidity sensor, and we're gonna compare that to a different humidity sensor. So whenever it is greater than or equal to, relative to a vice, because we're comparing it to a different humidity sensor, the hallway humidity sensor. So when it's greater than or equal to 20% higher, than the hallway humidity sensor, it's gonna trigger this rule. So we're done with this trigger event. That looks good right there. So now that we've got our trigger event, we gotta tell the rule what to do once it's triggered. So the first thing we want that rule to do is turn on the fan. So we're gonna control switches. We're gonna turn switches on and we're gonna go to the kids bathroom fan right here. And we're gonna turn that on right away. No delay needed. So we're done with that action. So once the trigger is set, the first thing we do is turn the bathroom fan on. Now we need a way to turn the bathroom fan off. So, but we want to wait until the conditions are right to do that. So when the humidity is dropping, we want to turn it off. So we're going to select a new type of action. That's a wait, a wait type of action. So uh, we're going to wait 
until wait for conditions. So the conditions we wanted to find are it's a new condition. And this is again with the humidity sensor. So we're going to say when the humidity drops to 18% above the hallway humidity, we're going to do something else. So we're going to select again the kids bathroom humidity sensor and we're going to compare it to when it is less than or equal to relative to advice compared again to the hallway humidity sensor right here. So when it's less than or equal to 18% higher than the hallway humidity sensor, we're going to do something else. Now what we, we don't want this to trigger the second that happens in case the humidity uh, sensor registers at 20 over then drops for whatever reason to 18 and then jumps right back up again. So we're going to say once this condition has lasted for five minutes. So we're going to use this new feature in Rule Machine called Use Duration. So we're saying um, we're going to select uh, a time of five minutes. So we're going to say when these conditions have been met for five minutes, when this humidity has been 18 or lower compared to the hallway humidity sensor for five minutes, then it's going to trigger our next action. So we're going to we're going to be done with this wait condition right here. And you can see we're going to be done with the wait condition. And so now we've waited and the rule says, okay, this has been 18 or lower for five minutes. So now what are we going to do? The last thing we're going to do, we're going to turn that fan off again. So we're going to select control switches, turn switches off. And the switch we're going to turn off is the kids bathroom fan right here. No delay. We're going to do that right away. We already waited the five minutes for those conditions to exist. So we're done with this action and we're done with all actions. That's what we want. We got to turn it on. We have it waiting for the conditions to, to calm down a little bit in the bathroom and then we're turning the fan off and that is it for our actions and that's it for our rule. So you can check it all right here. It looks really good. Um, we don't have any other variables we want to do or anything, anything else like that. So uh, that's it for a rule. We're going to hit done right here. And just like that, our fan is automated. It's a pretty slick way a Hubbardette can save you some potential mold and mildew headaches down the road. To see more things you should be doing with Hubbardette Elevation, subscribe to this channel. Click on that bell to be notified of the next, of the next episode. And don't forget to share your ideas in our online community at community.hubbardette.com or in our Hubbardette users group on Facebook. Thanks for watching and thanks for elevating your environment with Hubitat Elevation.